Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I wrote up some of the queries that we are seeing against our web application Honeypot. These queries are looking for DNS over HTTP resolvers. DNS over HTTP has become quite popular given that all the browsers are supporting it and is of course one of the features that not just attackers are looking for but also people who pretty much just want some privacy. Now many networks are blocking well-known DNS over HTTP resolvers, which leaves uh, these individuals then up to essentially hunting for open resolvers they may find uh, set up and configured by third parties that are not necessarily sort of well known in databases. And that's, I believe, what we are seeing here in some of the data. Now, some of it may also be companies that are probably assembling block lists to block these DNS over HTTP resolvers. Sadly, I think our data here is still a bit limited. Uh, I configured a couple of honeypots to actually implement uh, DNS over HTTPS and to resolve these queries, but haven't really seen anything in these honeypots beyond just uh, simple sort of fingerprinting like we see against uh, the random web server honeypots too, which don't actually implement the DNS over HTTPS protocol. Kaspersky published a report with details regarding a tool that they found deployed in industrial control systems that uh, does a breach air-gapped networks. Now, before you get too excited about air-gapped networks here, remember at SCOTUS always calls them very long latency links. This malware, just like malware before it, uh, focuses on removal drives in order to bridge the air gap. So no fancy like fan speed or LED blinking lights or anything like this. Just good old USB drives are being used to, first of all, infect the industrial control system and then also exfiltrate any data that is collected by the malware. And Google updated its inactive account policy stating that they may start delete accounts that have had no activity over a two-year period. This will start becoming active in December, so end of the year. The security issue with this, of course, is if you are using your Gmail Google account for any kind of authentication activity, meaning that you, for example, configured it as a password reset email and, well, don't really use it because you don't really need to reset your password all the time. It's not that hard to keep your account active. Really, all you have to do is log in at least once every two years. Or while you're logged in, just do something on a Google property, like, for example, watch a YouTube video. For the password reset use case, it may not be a bad idea, actually, to at least once a year do send an email to the password reset the email contact to make sure the address still works and uh, well then of course disable it if it no longer works. The blog post by Google also doesn't state if another user will immediately be able to register that particular account or if there is sort of some kind of cooling off period where the account is deleted but can no longer be registered by another user. And sticking with Google here for a second story, Cofence has a report uh, with details how the Google Accelerated Mobile Pages or AMP service is being used to hide phishing pages. Google AMP is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can basically use it as an arbitrary redirect. It's just google.com slash AMP slash S and then the actual URL you would like to direct the user uh, to. This, of course, then helps uh, with phishing because the google.com domain is not going to get blocked and an attacker could uh, pretty easily then redirect users to the actual phishing page. Probably actually also somewhat effective for phishing against Google itself because it sort of works a little bit like an open uh, redirect. 
Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for also clicking the five star rating for this podcast in your favorite podcast app. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.